Welcome to The Details with Elliot Connie and Adam Frower. This is a podcast where we examine the intersection between solution-focused brief therapy and current topics going on in the world. And we do this because we genuinely want the world to be a better place. So enjoy and come examine the details with us. Today, I've been having a lot of thoughts about the idea of belonging. And it made me reflect on the power and importance of belonging to me. And I want to I want to share two stories that highlight the power and impact and importance of belonging. The first one was as an African-American, you're kind of aware, even before you're actively aware of it, you're kind of subconsciously aware that you live in a world that is not fully accepting of you and who you are and what you represent and, and those sorts of things. When I got my master's degree and my license, I remember feeling such a deep sense of satisfaction going to my first event which ironically is the event I met you for the first time, feeling like I belong in this group because I have all of the criteria that everybody else at that conference had. And I walked into this environment kind of not expecting oppression and discrimination. I walked into this environment kind of expecting acceptance. And I was surprised over the years, multiple years, as I wrote books and started doing lectures, that I got very clear, overt signs of not belonging. Now, it makes me so proud and so happy that I was able to stick with it for long enough because of you and our colleagues in London, Chris Iveson, Harvey Ratner, and Evan George. I always had a, like a corner of the field where I felt like I belonged. So no matter how difficult the discrimination and struggles that I experienced were, I drew a tremendous source of support and resilience from knowing I belonged in this small little corner of this field. And the undying support I got from the four of you meant everything to me and activated a strength in me that I didn't know I had, activated a resilience in me that I didn't know I had, and allowed me to tap in to something in me that I now realize is remarkable, but it wouldn't have been there without that source or sense of belonging. And sometimes people have often asked me about the closeness of our relationship. It goes into many levels, but one of the places where it started for me, I think, was when I was beginning to experience overt signs of oppression. You and, you know, Chris Harvey and Evan did not leave my corner. And that sense of belonging was transformative in my work, in my life. And then something else happened just recently about this sense of belonging and how important it is and how I think it's playing a role in the current world in which we live. You know, we're living in this world going through this pandemic and, you know, some parts of the world are becoming open, some parts of the world are still in significant levels of lockdown. You know, I'm currently on a trip. I, I took a trip out to Denver to participate in a group that I'm a part of. And we went out to dinner one night. It was one of the first times throughout this, I wasn't wearing a mask. And I went into the restaurant and most of the customers in the restaurant weren't wearing masks. And it's the first time a lot of the employees, the the restaurant servers were not wearing masks. And I noticed it. And I asked one of the servers, why is that? And the server said, those of us who have been vaccinated, we're allowed to not wear masks, but we have to wear this bracelet. And she showed me a bracelet that said vaccinated on it. And I said to her like, ooh, I really want one of those. Can I buy one from you? And she said, well, let me go talk to my manager. And after you know, conversation back and forth here and there, she brings me, she said, here, you can just have it. So I now wear this bracelet. And why that's so important to me is because I live in Texas, which is, it's a state that has not taken all of the precautions suggested as seriously as I think they should have. As we start coming out of this, and I notice myself walking around without a mask, I want to make sure people know which group I belong to. I want to make sure that I identify myself as someone who has been vaccinated and taking this seriously. And I've only taken my mask off because trusted sources have said, if you've been vaccinated as I have, you don't need to wear a mask in certain situations. I don't want to be miscategorized as a non-mask wearer who's anti-vaccination, COVID precautions, that sort of thing. So I'm currently wearing my vaccinated bracelet just to make sure the world puts me in the appropriate bucket and knows what group I belong to. So I think belonging is important on kind of two levels. Number one, it helped me and gave me strength to do things that 
otherwise I would not been, have been able to do due to you guys as my friends and colleagues giving me the sense of belonging. But I also think it's important as in terms of an identification. Like I want to make sure that the world identifies me appropriately as someone who does and did take COVID seriously. And now that we're coming out of it and, and I'm not wearing a mask all the time, I don't want people to miscategorize me as someone who is anti-mask wearing. It's so interesting what you said, because I think there's so many places that I could go with what you just talked about. I just want to start with even this idea of belonging. Why is it important? And I think you hit on some of the things that are really valuable about belonging is it gives us a sense of, I'm going to use a word that you didn't use, but it gives us a sense of home, right? When I'm in a group where I feel like I belong, then there's a sense of homeness, which I think comes along with a sense of safety. It comes along with a sense of feeling and being understood, right? And just think about the positive aspects of safety, of feeling and being understood, right? That's going to breed all kinds of other things like competence, like the ability to create or think beyond, right? There's so many aspects of when I feel like I have a sense of belonging, it actually, I think, unlocks the capacity that I have to become the best me. You talked a little bit about coming into this solution-focused community and not feeling really welcome, but having a small subset of people who said, you belong here. We accept you for who you are and what you're going to bring to the table. And you can see that as you've held on to that sense of belonging, then we just get to stand by and also like watch you flourish. And I think that's one of the, the other benefits of belonging is that it's no longer just a sense of my own confidence or a sense of my own safety. But now I get to cherish and relish the success of people who fit into my group, right? I get to look at other people and I get to say, look at the amazing things that that person from my group gets to do. And again, I think that becomes kind of this upward spiral of because I feel safe, because I feel confident, then I get to then exude that onto other people and they get to then push it back on me. And so it creates this synergy of belonging, this synergy of safety that I think really then kind of unlocks the potential of the entire group of people who belong. I don't think that one of the hallmarks of belonging is that we become so rigid that we have to think the same, that we have to act the same, that we have to believe everything that is the same. That isn't what belonging is. I think really what belonging is, is that sense of safety that allows me to be who I am and you love and accept me and my differences and understand that those differences fit into a bigger whole. And it's the whole that we're concerned about, not the individual nuances of difference. It's funny, you, you just said, I think you just said it perfectly and beautifully and epically. Belonging is a sense of radical acceptance of people who are going to make the whole better. And it is such a powerful thing to be able to feel that sense of belonging. And, and even like thinking about this COVID time, when we were first told like to start wearing masks, a lot of people were pissed about it, like not wanting to wear masks, don't wear masks, da, da, da. And I thought to myself, there are people for whom COVID is a significant risk. At the time, it was like people with heart issues, people with lung issues, people whose immune systems had been compromised. And I thought to myself, if I make a decision based upon my own selfish comfort, I don't want to wear a mask either. I find them hot, I find them uncomfortable, and I don't like them. But if I make a decision for the greater good, I would wear a mask every day for the rest of my life if it would make those people feel more safe and more comfortable. Because that's how you make a decision for the greater good. And it communicates a sense of belonging. Mm. It communicates a sense of acceptance. We're doing this for the global well being of all of us citizens. At its core, belonging needs to start with, we are making decisions and taking actions 
that are about the greater good. And we're including you in the greater good. Mm -hmm. I think that's when human beings are at their best is when we are making decisions for the greater good and we're making it overt. I am including you, the external person, in the greater good. You're hitting on something super important. And I think kind of the opposite of belonging is othering. So often we look at our group and we say, you belong, which can allow us to then look at other people and say, you don't belong. Right. And when we do that, we're typically looking for what I would say are superficial differences. We're saying, because you're like this, you don't belong. But, you know, if, if this is a group of men, you're a woman, so you don't belong. If this is a group of straight people, you're gay, so you don't belong. If, if this is a group of white people, then you're black, so you don't belong. But when we take those superficial differences and we make that a point of othering, then we fail to look at different points of intersection. So if I'm in a group of men and there's a woman, then perhaps she's white or perhaps she's straight or where there's other points of intersection. And in this description, I'm using purposefully points of privilege. Oftentimes, privilege is a way for us to look at others and to say, you don't have privilege and therefore you don't belong. And we set up laws or we set up rules or we set up boundaries or barriers to say, you can't get into this group because you don't have these things. And I think what you just said is, I look at the other person and I say, I'm going to try to, in some sense, change the rules or change the boundaries or to whatever, in order to find a way to include you to say you do belong here because you fit this category or because you have this characteristic or this is your interest and it overlaps with uh, my interest. We have to be really, really purposeful about looking for places of intersection and looking at places of overlapping interest to say, how can I include you? This is going to sound really stupid, but in research, we oftentimes look at what we call within group differences and between group differences. And we try to minimize between group differences in research, right? We try to say, we're going to give these groups as exactly the same treatment as we possibly can. And then we're going to notice, does the within group differences actually make a difference? I think if we took that stance in society and we said, we're going to try to minimize between group differences, that would progress us forward, that would move us forward, that would give us new understanding and new knowledge, that would give us new synergy if we said, let's try to minimize between group differences as much as possible. Right. And the other thing I want to add to that is it's not just saying the collective you belong, it's making it very overt. Like I remember our good friend Chris, when I was experiencing really poor treatment on a public forum, I was a part of the public forum. Chris was a part of the public forum. And I made it clear that I will no longer be participating in this public forum. And I noticed that Chris stopped participating in this public forum as well. And I asked him about it. And he said, because where you go, I go. And it was a very like overt communication that to me, you belong. And I'm willing to risk things in support of that belonging. And occasionally, who you accept is a risk because there are certain groups that the way they experience camaraderie is they exclude the same people. So who you accept can become a risk. And that was an overt statement of you belong in our little group here. And I'm willing to publicly and while risking something overtly make that clear overtly to you, but also overt to the world that this is a group. I think that's so good. And I think thinking about Chris, right, he's somebody who's so good at just saying things the way they are. He is perfectly willing to give up his own sense of comfort in order to help someone else. Right. I think that is one of the requirements of creating a group that feels like there's a sense of belonging is that each individual has to give up 
what makes them individually comfortable in order to provide a place that's generally comfortable. When we take that radical stance of acceptance, then I'm accepted because I'm different and I accept everyone else because they're different. I just think about the benefits of that, right? So I've been studying recently the the effects of positive emotion and thinking about being radically accepted you can't help but then feel happiness and joy and excitement and motivation, all of those things. And one of the things that we know about positive emotion, when people feel those things, which I would say comes from this acceptance, is that it leads to well-being, right? It leads to longer life. It leads to greater sense of satisfaction. It leads to health, right? If we think about the world problems that we're trying to fix, right, like health disparities and poverty and all of those kinds of things, simply taking a place of acceptance and belonging, it could actually fix many of the issues that we have if we just say, let's figure out how to let everyone feel like they belong. And going back to the issue about masks, and it's a good example because it's going on in the world currently, it's an opportunity for us to say, you belong. It's an opportunity for us to say, I'm willing to make a decision that while uncomfortable for me, produces a positive outcome for the greater community. And on on some level, our inability to do that collectively has made me sad over the past year and a half or however long this has been going on. But I'm certainly going to continue to try to do my part because it doesn't bother me whether, you know, people's like, there's some science that says masks don't do anything or whatever. But even if all they did was make people feel better, that's good enough for me. Mm -hmm. And I think that's kind of the point of what we're trying to say here is sometimes that sense of belonging, like it just makes you feel better. And like you said so wonderfully, like you can't help but benefit from the sensation of just feeling better. Just thinking also about us as people, right? People inherently are social beings, right? Which sounds really weird coming from me because I'm pretty introverted and I really like being by myself, but you like to be social with your four members of your family. (laughs) That's true. (laughs) That is true. But I think you think about just the benefits of associating with one another. And one of the quotes that I really like comes from Gregory Bateson. And he said, we're all more human than not. I think if we took that stance, right, of we're all more human than not, then we begin to look for points of commonality. We begin to look for how can I make you more comfortable. And that if everyone took that stance, the world as a whole would be better. And I think your example of masks is a really great example, right? Some people may not like them. Some people may may not believe the science of them, whatever. But knowing that I did live with somebody who was immunocompromised, right? My wife had cancer not even a year before all of this happened. And all of the sudden, masks became very, very important to me, not for me, but for her. We as a family then had to be very, very careful about who we let into our circle and who we didn't let into our circle, not because we were trying to discriminate, but because we had to, because we had to be discriminate. And I think if collectively we had taken a stance of we're going to do our very best to make others safe, even if masks don't work, if we had all done our very best to make other people safe, then everyone's sense of belonging goes up, but also everyone's safety goes up. So even if it wasn't masks, but even if it was every other thing because we were thinking of other people, um, We would have stayed home better than we did. We would have done a lot of things because we were thinking of other people and we want them to feel like they belong. Right, exactly. Man, this is good. This is really good. And I hope people out there understand. And this is my challenge and my calling. Do what you can to make everyone around you feel like as if they belong in the circles in which you exist. Yeah. I think that's one of the greatest gifts you can give people. I guess I'll just throw out a nugget for you to all chew on is... I didn't really think about this at the beginning, but as we were thinking about it, one of the things that came up to me is how much belonging is connected to feeling self-worth. And I think that's some, you know, I think that's a topic for another day is worth. But 
I think these two things are intricately connected. And if we can help people to feel worth, that would be an amazing gift we could give to every single person we encounter. Absolutely. So Adam, as usual, our podcast, The Details, is brought to you by the Solution Focus Universe, which is the largest online training community dedicated to the Solution Focus Brief Therapy approach. And Solution Focus Notes, which is an electronic health record system dedicated specifically to the unique needs of the solution focused professionals that work with clients as clinicians. And you are able to do all of your documentation and charting within this system. Those are the sponsors for our podcast. And it has been our great pleasure to bring this podcast to you in this edition. Go out there and make other people feel belonged. It's probably the greatest gift you can give them.